I don't recommend getting face tattoos unless you've already <laughs> become rich. All right, like get rich first and then do that. Don't do it first. Hey, look, yeah. if, hey. If, if, if my man mm-hmm. who's got face tattoos can kill it in this game, this man is cold though. When taking care of people, he gets like customer service wise, I get tons of like good reviews because you care. Mm-hmm. People can see the transparency. They don't. They see past tattoos. Yeah, they see that you care. We got the Goon Squad, people. This is the Blue Collar Boardroom. These guys are actually a part of the Ragtag Misfit industry-leading team that we have at RRCA. Uh, I want to welcome uh, Chris, Jared, Anthony. Guys, welcome to the uh, Treehouse. Thanks for having us, Lee. One of my favorite thank you, places. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're going to hear all the stories of these guys. Jared's like my little brother. Chris has worked with the company for 10 years. And I've known Jer- uh, Anthony over here for, I don't know, six, seven years. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been in the family. Everyone's got a unique story. The biggest thing is I'm always interviewing other people from other roofers to other coaching consultants. And a lot of times my guys, my team, the people that are a part of my family, which is our RCA, they don't get to come on here and share the experience, strengths and hopes. Now, everyone sitting at this table has had some real lows. Um, I bailed out of college. I had to literally to stay out of jail. Uh, start going to AA meetings just to get into the roofing business. And I remember I was like 18 years old. Jared was probably hearing about it. But I was just a complete screw-up. I mean, and the point is is that roofing gave me an opportunity to plug into an industry that gave me confidence, that gave me a chance to build momentum. And a man that has no hope, that has no way to build momentum, that can't build confidence in a world that we live in today, you can get to a very low place. And I've been there. Um, Chris, you were a bartender, right? Yeah, I actually dropped out of high school. I mean, college to be a valet parker and a bartender uh, and a waiter. That Austin life, man. It was fun, right? Uh, Living this, the dream. Right. This guy uh, met right. met uh, Chris in Austin. And, you yeah, know. He was my roommate for a little you, bit. You know That's what's how funny I is I actually moved away from Plano to try to get away from all the, all the BS, okay? And Let's just be I real. We're derelicts, okay? <laughs> uh, Jerry played football. He hurt himself, and then he couldn't play football, so then he played girls, and he played parties, and he wrecked cars. You've wrecked every you car that you've home. owned. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, I wrecked. Jared's like a little brother here. Like, like not a serious wreck. Bumper, bumper, fender wreck. <laughs> <laughs> he can't drive for shit, okay? So, Anthony, drive. Anthony, just to give you a little background, he's part of our Cons to Contractor program. And, hey, look, <laughs> every, every one of us has made some mistakes and uh, had to deal with the law. But uh, you completely transformed your life. And I can, when you first got into the industry, you were, you were doing the work. Right. How'd you get in the business? Yeah, I started off just doing all the punch out work and, you know, being the guy out there swinging the hammer, doing all the hard work, and, you know, I made my way. Let's yeah. be real, okay? He fucked up all the jobs that I gave him and he <laughs> learned how to do fencing, painting. Yeah, yeah he came. I, I brought him to Austin and. I, yeah. yeah, he learned how to do uh, it. He taught it himself. He so was you, serious. So you got both of these guys into the business? Both of them. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Back in I Austin, feel bad for San y'all. Antonio, That's really why this is called a goon squad, okay? Um, yeah. You know, the thing is, is that Jared grew up in a roofing family. His dad was my dad's best friend. Um, they were all partnered with my uncle at one time. It was one big Greek roofing family. And I remember growing up, the get-togethers and whatnot. You know, the blue-collar American dream is about being able to work hard, but ever being able to live fun which means great parties nice toys jet skis dirt bikes boats ski trips and you know recently i've been obsessed with buying a plane everybody tells me I, it's not it, i'm not there yet it's the only way to get to the storms huh yeah. it's the only way to get to the storms you're not, you're not there yet look okay <laughs> you're right until my wife has got her her you gotta have a her her Two hundred fifty thousand. dollars My uncle told me that I needed to fly at least 200 hours uh, a month. But if I could come to the offices once a week uh, and each one of the offices come back and stay with my family, you know, and if it only cost me $3,000 to operate that for the day, then, you know, I can see it. But everybody's got to have, you know, the next step. One of our core values at our RCA is personal development. All these guys have really done a lot for growth. Um, Jared... um, 
we won't even get tell them tell them about how you grew this year what what what's different what have you done differently to not not screw up this year okay i'll do it real <laughs> quick here's a little quick <laughs> recap okay so i came back what may june of where'd you come Dallas, back from june. austin jail man all right i came back from jail in june <laughs> of 2019 and then uh, we to came to Naples, all right, and I, you know, lived with Chris for like two weeks, and then we ended up going to Fort Lauderdale. On a mentorship program. On a mentorship program to try to help this guy, and so we were all bought in. I was selling roofs. I was bought in in high energy, and this was the first one. It was like the, still the honeymoon. Let's okay. start at the beginning, okay? And here. We'll go backwards to your first year in the business. You, oh, no, you did no, go to I'll jail leave. and you had a lot of mishaps along yeah, the way, but that's a long story. Okay, but about uh, ten years ago, you got into the business. We we're in St. Louis. You're my little protege. You're knocking doors for me. You know, you wrecked a bunch of cars, got kicked out a I bunch of schools. Wreck, no cars. And you were just there, time. like no. my little my little door knocker. Remember? And then you were mad that you had to you, that I didn't didn't let you split all them deals. So here's the thing. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, I I sold the deal and we were split in half 50 50 all the way up until it was time to pay <laughs> okay <laughs> and i got a third you know? hey hey <laughs> he got me all the way i thought i was getting you all had this to pay money your dues, i thought i was getting all this money <laughs> don't worry y'all got me back y'all got me for a snowboard recently i had to just buy one old cody must have had that i'm giving all kinds of shit away don't live don't don't even get me started, dog. But and here's the deal. Jared, year, Jared's a part. Year, Jared's uh, learned a lot of hard lessons. And, and roofing, you can make a lot of money, but you can also get a lot of rope. You hang yourself. And Jared can sell. He can recruit. He can start storms. But, you know, it's about being in control of your own energy. And, you know, I have an addictive personality, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's uh, unproductive things. You know, as a young man, it's easy to fall into these holes. I fell into these holes. They've, they've hurt me in the past. But you've made a rebound this year. And... I'm Think, trying to tell y'all. Okay, we'll get to that point. Okay, well, last year, okay, so anyways, we were doing nothing in Fort Lauderdale, spinning our wheels. I kind of got bitter. Like, I, the energy, like, started getting bitter when you live with someone for so long. And then Vince came, and then, you know, we went to up to Dorian, and we found Melbourne, and it was like a new spark of energy, okay? And I was out there selling again, and it, it was good. Like, we were, had a good balance. Chris was in the office doing production. I was out there selling with Vince and Cody. And then, you know, uh, yeah. I, I'll I give got, you a little play-by-play. -play. We tried to open office in Fort, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, you know, is... No, I'm saying that at the end of that is when I ended up going to jail in Florida. Oh, and so that's there's an uber app you know there is a uber jared's app. you know he's one of these guys who doesn't always think on his toes in certain situations but that's okay a lot of knuckleheads out there and a lot of guys are really good in business they just need to learn how to you know uber uber you know anyways let me tell you so when i came back to the business though because i hadn't gave chris a shout out because chris really like floated me in 2019 through jail and then a little bit like 2020, but I paid him back eventually. Okay, so so, so here's the deal. Y'all have done a great thing. You set a Melbourne office on the East Coast. It's going to do $10 million in sales. A year An after Hellstorm. Anthony was a very big part of being um, really like your second badass sales guy that come in there and built a million-dollar book of business. You and shout out to Tyrone Car yeah. Carrington. Oh, t Tyrone. Yeah, but Anthony will never give me my credit in, <laughs> in that book of business that he built, okay? Uh, Jared, Jared helped me through, through a lot. I'll say on camera. <laughs> and, and, and But you look, here's the deal. You, you know, Chris was in the business a long time. He wanted to step up and be a manager. The first, the first storm, it didn't go so well. Um, Fort Lauderdale wasn't moving fast enough. We would still like to be there because the roofs pay a little bit more than they do up in Melbourne. It was but, hard to convince people to file a storm uh, while there's fresh storms in the water, right? And then we're over there trying to rebuild a company that was already going under. So we had our hands kind of tied behind our back trying to really build that area over there. So the Melbourne office really helped us come together as a team and as a group to... Well, let's let's take it back. So, I mean, the Melbourne office really didn't come together until January, February, till I got okay, out Okay, so this is the story of a, of a group that's just like starting a roofing company. And yeah, I say, so how do you build a $10 million roofing company like Clockwork? Okay, and we do have a system. 
And uh, if you want that system, you can go to skydiamonds-roadmap.com, download it. And what you do is you get sales guys like Anthony. Uh, first of all, Jared kind of helped get the first book of business started. He got Vincent there. Hold on, let me, let me play this play-by-play. -play. Vincent, Anthony, Tyrone. And from three good salesmen, neighborhoods busted open. But on top of that, we were getting some Facebook leads. We were buying some telemarketing leads. We did some campaigns that got us into neighborhoods. And you know, overall it was the culture that won. So how, how do you go from zero getting your ass kicked in Fort Lauderdale fighting only in jail recently to you in Melbourne as your first, after 10 years in this business, as a sales guy, you come in as a manager. How do you, how do you make this transformation where, 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 where now you have to build a team and what, what kind of struggles do you have along the way? First off, it's only eight years. And then second off, the biggest struggle, I think, was You're talking to the microphone. understanding the growth and what needed to be done. At that point, we were leaving Naples. Naples was dying. Lauderdale was dying. It wasn't the great area that we wanted to be in. And we had to understand that if we wanted to make something out of 2019 to 2020, that we had to come together and, and put it there. It wasn't going to happen for us. Naples wasn't just going to fall in our laps as, it, as deals kind of do out here. Um, so we had to really get to our grind. At that point, it was me, Jared, and Vincent. And the only last thing that we were going to do was come back to Naples with our tails tucked between our legs. Um, and so we stuck with it, and we created the, the group that we have now, which is about 15 guys. You know, One thing about your group is it demonstrates door-to-door -door culture. The guys are in the office training. You're, uh, you did the 75 hard challenge. Mm -hmm. Only um, a few people in the company have taken up this challenge. Uh, t talk to us about what that was like if it was hard what well, the hardest part about it anything you learned along the way um i wanted to do a post about it because the i wanted to do a post about it because there's such an interesting uh method of learning that you get there and the discipline that's instilled in you um from being able to separate your social you know mishaps of drinking whenever anybody else drinks to being able to stay dedicated to the hard work of working out past eight or nine o'clock when you literally are getting home from the office at that time. So that was the biggest hard. And then showing that to the guys that, hey, not only am I here first in the morning, I'm here last at night leaving the office. And then you get to see me working out every day in the group chat with these guys showing them that, hey, if I can do it and I can spend more time on this, then you can as well. And that's the whole thing that we try to instill in our company is if we can do it, you can do it. You know, it's all about mental dedication. You're wearing a shirt. You're part of the Million Dollar Club, I guess, setting the pace for the sales rep while you manage. Um, you landed a million dollar deal and that deal started off as a roof repair as a commercial job. You've seen a lot of people land commercial jobs. So I always talk about, don't be the guy who envies uh, other people don't have big roof envy. Did you have big roof envy? Always, you always have big roof envy. <laughs> you can't, you talk can't to be him, in this talk industry. about big roof envy. Big yeah. roof envy, envy is watching every every Your dad other gave player. Me big roof envy the first time when he sold the same yeah. roof twice and made it's a million. It's pulling dollars. in the town and seeing roofers on these five hundred square buildings or whatever. They don't even know what type of roof system it is. You know, I mean, it's it's very typical to see the. Un uneducated person out here landing large deals so when it finally I mean, another roofer referred us the deal yeah so when it finally comes you know you oh, just have to crazy. take everything <laughs> with a grain a and work it as hard as you can lead. a roofing company gave that lead to because it was outside of their zone and they didn't do it but here's the deal when you follow the methods that are in the large lost secrets course if you go to largelostsecrets.com it'll actually show me close an HOA then you can do a deal even even though there's other roofers and really not be competing with them because we, we had a whole different solution. That was the thing is I was able to come up with a, a solution to their problem that no one else had come up with. People had been dealing with that roof for 5, 10, 20 years. They just did a $70,000 repair on the community right next door that's inside this complex because they were uneducated, right? And here we're able to bring in a $1.8 million to this community, get them to get a whole new roofing system, all from just being educated. Well, whenever you run a $10 million storm and sell a million, um, you seek to make a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you use your goal for? I mean, you don't get paid until they're all capped out for 2020's sales. What do you want to make in off of those sales, off of the, off of the income? 
Uh, at the beginning of the year, my goal is a million dollars in commission paid in 2020. Now, the roofing industry is a little different. It takes a lot longer to build these jobs because you have to manage them. So things don't just turn over. It may take you till next year to collect it. A hundred percent. But at the same thing, I did, in my opinion, generate a million dollars worth of revenue or commission in 2020 um, based on what I've generated and built with Jared. Well, forget about the money, bro. Dude, I'm really proud of you. The personal development, I think this is coming together, like getting lucky, landing the big jobs, having the team, having everybody around you show up. And Anthony was a big part of it. I mean, Anthony was, uh, as soon as he came in there, an assistant manager, helping Jared do his job. And you know, I couldn't drive. I didn't have a driver's license when I got <laughs> So, I mean, Goon Squad. <laughs> Goon Squad. So, it worked out perfectly, you know? You got to do what it takes. All right. So, yeah. so, Anthony, you were you were doing punch out work. You, you had your, your, you know, walk me through like being stuck with a tool belt and why people want to work with their hands versus selling. Well, first of all, well, first of all, what was, were, were you scared about the tattoos? Walk them through that fear too, a little bit. Yeah, so I took on that that line of work because you know I had all these tattoos going for me and all this and going you for know, you, dog. That was uh, that was they're pretty uh, cool, man. What's the eyeball one? I like yeah. that. I think it was just that. a natural natural thing, and I always told him, look, man, every time you get away from me, you start fucking up. Yeah, I mean yeah. it was hard we work. Together so you like thought you thought homeowners times. wouldn't take you serious, right? I, I thought you know you know if a guy like me knocks on on a door. You should run. Yeah, or, or <laughs> it, you know, it, it doesn't look right to a lot of people, and especially you know, out here in Florida, it's a little bit of a higher class of people and stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah, but but, <laughs> but it, it he, worked out for me. You know, yeah, no, he it, came it's, up. It's funny that the day that I I stopped trying to hide all the tattoos mm -hmm. is the day and I was myself to people. Mm -hmm. It worked out. For what me. do you think was your biggest like thing that you had to overcome? Um. Because well, I know you, I noticed you got some stuff, you got some work done here, right? Yeah, I mean, I've been working on getting, uh, you know, laser removal on, on things. It's a process, um, but it's an investment into myself. I so. think face tattoos when he got here was his biggest um, scare. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. when you have a perception. Hey, I had listen. I had I had a card this game that you're supposed to like form an opinion of, it, and the card was like face tattoos are always bad, and I'm like, no, that's not true. Sometimes face tattoos are good, like. Mike Tyson's face tattoo. <laughs> it's fucking Mike Tyson. Yeah, dude. I mean, it, you know. I mean, he can get a face tattoo. Yeah, I don't recommend getting face tattoos unless you've already <laughs> become rich. All right, like get rich first and then do that. Don't do it first. Hey, look, yeah. it, hey. It, 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 my man mm -hmm. who's got face tattoos can kill it in this game. This man is cold though. When taking care of people, he gets like customer service wise, they get tons of like good reviews because you care. Mm -hmm. People can see the transparency. They don't. They see past tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. They see that you care. Well, I have to go a little bit harder than everybody else because I do have a little bit of, you know, people looking at me with a judgment. So mm -hmm. I have to give them that extra. So when you service. first came in, you saw you were selling jobs. What I, a lot of guys learn this business, but they don't learn how to build them. They don't learn how to work the numbers on the estimate or the work order or really become a contractor. Because mm -hmm. we, we teach three things. We teach how to sell a roof how to negotiate a claim, how to do an estimate with an insurance, and how to be a contractor, which means you, you bring uh, and organization to a world of chaos. You handle shit uh, for money, and uh, you don't do the roofs. You sell the roofs, but you deal with people during the day in which you tear off their roof, which means they're very emotional, and you're able to get your paperwork down quick, learn how to build jobs quickly, create 100% customer sa satisfaction, and then start to duplicate it with others. And walk me through the time in which that you're like, I'm tired of just selling and why you decided to quit selling. And I told you that maybe you were going to make less money if you decided to move into leadership. But why why you thought you wanted to do that? It's something that comes from like inside. It's an internal drive. It's something that fulfills what, what's people. It? So it fulfills me. What is? What do you mean? What is what's it? it? Being help able to help others. people. Yeah, to help yeah. others. To be yeah. able to train. And I, I want to be able to help people, train people. That fulfills me, like right. being out there. And, and be the boss. Yeah, I like it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It feels good. Mm -hmm. And and I and that's something I enjoy doing. So I don't you don't know this, but I'm going to make you a deal on the storm in Orlando. You're going to get a raise, but we'll talk about all that later. My point is um, what we've done at this point is – We've gone from door to door guy, or from punch out guy. Well, you've gone from, you know, incarcerated inmate, inmate, yeah. uh, to reformed citizen, cap out king, 
that was doing you know punch out work mm -hmm. to sales guy that was million dollar sales guy on track in his first year to sell a million you still sold about seven hundred thousand and then you move to boss now you're in charge of your own office in orlando and this was all in your first year that we first year elevated first you. first year you're on the fast track to the the year that he's having which is a million dollars in commissions mm -hmm. and there's a lot of different ways to do it you can just land a big job like glenn so <laughs> but that's the everyone's That'd dream nice. that's yeah. everyone's <laughs> dream yeah. but I, I teach a diversified income i've always made i like I find energy from teaching people. And the first day that I trained somebody and I sold five roosts and that day I realized I was a show off and I could really like <laughs> maximize my potential by having a team and also duplicate my efforts, give me purpose and energy. And uh, you know, from that, I've been recruiting people in this business my whole life. So you make income off of your team, you make income off your personal sales, you make income off the large whales. Right. And that's that's how you. I'll, I'll tell you, um, he built a lot of momentum up, and he was able to ride that because he wanted to be a manager way before. Okay, you know, so now we every good everybody's stories. We're all comeback kings. Everybody made a lot of money this year. Everybody's getting rewarded and recognized. Now let's get into the dirt of it all, okay? Because here's the real deal: in business, having hard conversations is the secret sauce to success. And everybody's in the pursuit of truth, and everybody wants what's best for the company. Everybody has egos. And so, um, you know, Chris in Melbourne, you know, Jared was coming up and kind of growing out of one of his positions in life. And, you know, uh, basically he had to move on to Tampa. Now, without going on to too many details, all right, Jared, why do you think Tampa is an opportunity for you to reinvent yourself once again? Um, I don't think I need to reinvent myself. Uh, there was nothing. I just carried on from the momentum I had in Melbourne. Oh, you're, you're good? Yeah. <laughs> you're good the way you at? Yeah. You I, good? Don't be afraid to Bogard, hustle yeah. hard. I mean, I'm recruiting and training the guys the same way. I mean, I got the secret sauce if I wrote it down, too. So if you want it, <laughs> go ahead and email me, jared.janancheck at rrca florida. I'd like to follow you on Instagram, too, here's, if you had one. Here's the thing, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm the real roof god, all right? All right, so here's the deal. Jared, it's okay. Getting comfortable with sharing your vulnerabilities is very tough. Um... Jared, well, here then you tell me why why I had to reinvent myself after well, I left well, Melbourne. Well, first of all, Jared started the storm, okay. And Anthony and Vincent are Jared's recruits, and Chris was the backbone to the team. So when you when you go back and you win a championship, there's problems because everybody wants to know was it Shaq or was it Kobe? And if you ever read Phil Jackson's book, um, they had a problem. They could have won a lot more championships. Shaq and Kobe if they would have just fucking had the ability to deal with each other's egos and basically it was Shaq that was the reason that they won championship it was Kobe it was the reason they won a championship it's a good problem to have to have both of them but you know basically probably the same thing that happened with LeBron and Kyrie and when there's two good people it's a it you know that's okay all right you got to make a name for yourself and I think the main thing is is that you establish yourself you got it you got a car you, you have a clean slate. You built this $10 million storm and sales team, and we give you all the credit for being the sales engine that get it started. I think the one thing that, you know, anything that's ever been held against me, my vulnerabilities in life, just sharing everything and why I haven't been a good leader, is sometimes your standards are what you tolerate, and everything you do is held against you again in leadership. You don't realize it, but, you know, you're asking to live in a bubble to where every action that you take is judged. And it's one of the reasons why I decided to do 75 hard because of the discipline that I figured if I would be disciplined for myself first that my people would realize. Now I've always been disciplined, you know me, to knock doors, to stay hustling, to be on the game and be in roofing. But when it comes to you know being disciplined to take care of your mind, body, spirit, take care of your business, personal development, and, and, and really maximize your potential, you know, the thing is is that Sometimes you got to find your own path. And Anthony went on to Orlando. He was a part of the Melbourne Storm because we needed your help and we needed expansion and we're taking over. We have a big mission. You, it's like churches. You, we plant a church in Orlando. And you, you're, you're the pastor of the church. Um, we planted a church in Tampa. We needed a pastor, Jared, and you were called to the altar. 
you know, when it comes down to it, things don't happen to us. They happen for us. And so on a brand, even though, even though maybe the sale, what I mean, what I've done in the past, I've partied too much with the guys. Okay. Bottom line is, is that whenever you, you, you hang out with them in certain settings, you give the fraternization and it does not always allow you to hold them accountable. And a lot of times, if you don't have the ability to be disciplined on yourself, then people won't respect what you have to say. And so if people question you, even if they're wrong, they're still questioning you. And if everyone questions you, well, then you got a problem because you've lost the court of appeals, which is the crowd. Win the crowd, you win the people, you win the audience, you don't get fucking your head chopped off. And in the end, uh, the ego is about how we view other people's opinions and how aware we are. And being self-aware in business is being able to see all this and being able to judge what you're good at, what you're not good at when you're being over the top. Now it takes a ridiculous amount of ego to be successful in business. Like you saying you're a roof God is going to propel you to be a roof God. But what you have to realize is we are an empty cup. And what makes me a roof God is that I am serving millions of people, them information, time, energy, and effort. I'm serving lots of people in our business and I'm also seeking a lot of information as a guy who doesn't know shit. I got friends that make 400 million or worth 400 million that earned a million in their pocket by 30, eight figures by 40, worth nine figures by 40 years old. So what does that say about me? I mean, it says, Hey, they're no different than me. You know, I hadn't saved enough money over the years. I've partied too much. I squandered a ton of opportunity. I fraternized too much with the guys. I haven't educated them enough. I hadn't held the line enough. I hadn't set the example enough. I haven't lived to the highest standard enough. Maybe that's why I have had mediocre results in the past. You think it's some surprise this year that I hold myself to a higher standard and we double our sales even though we were having a great year before? No, this is an extension of us evolving. I hired CEO coaches that helped us get more alignment with core values, with leadership meetings. How did the core values, leadership meetings, Zoom calls change our company? I think it just created us more of an open platform to verbalize what the direction that we need to be in, um, not only from the upper management, but from the lower management to have the different levels to project us right you know, in the path and keep us on that path. Because without that, what we would be doing is just kind of scatterbraining, everybody shooting off their ideas left and right. Zoom's such a great technology. One of the things that happens is, is that, and this is one thing I want y'all to know, is that what you don't say in a meeting, I don't want you saying behind each other's back. Like if it's not, if, it's, if it is something that needs to be brought up to somebody, and you can't bring it up in a way in that group setting, then if you go around each other and passively seek a solution by not addressing it head on, that's what we call conflict debt. When there's two people, there's an issue that needs to be solved. People don't talk about it. You sugarcoat it for so long, it boils, it explodes, and then we have a situation. And we've had to deal with some situations here, but we're all friends and family. So for people that are in this business, take away all the bullshit. How do you deal with those situations in business, dealing with the personalities and the egos? Definitely the hardest part of this entire industry because we get such a flux of people from um, ex-college grads to ex-car salesmen to uh, ex-meat salesmen to whatever, you know, really floats through the door at, at the time. And what that means is we have to try to bend to those people's um, s salary that they're requesting, how they want to work or how they plan to work or how we even can ch coach them. So it turns into more of almost a babysit sometimes because we have to retrain these people on how to either deal with people or how to overcome new obstacles. So it's very intriguing. Well, guys, um, I can tell you that I've made a ton of mistakes, but one of the things I'm most grateful for is the fact that y'all are a part of my inner circle. Now, I've been hard on Jared, but let me tell you what Jared is. Jared is a bad to the bone storm starter. What is a storm starter? It's a guy that can go into any neighborhood at any given time and create momentum. Big momentum is the most important thing in business. Momentum comes in the form of jobs because when we get jobs we get other jobs and salespeople getting jobs when they get jobs we get more jobs we're like a disease like a pandemic we spread and this man is one of these infectious diseases that has a track record of always um going viral and so even though thank you even though he um has had his struggles just like a lot of 
blue collar entrepreneurs, contractors, white collar people, you know, he's worked through them. And, you know, there's, you know, his dad was my dad's best friend. He tragically passed away. It was not a good situation, but dealing with that has been over the last four years, Jared's biggest challenge. So moving forward, Jared, what are the positive things that have got you into this new Jared? So I, it's just a whole different life change. I had to drop everything about the old me. I mean, just everything. And so reading books, um, listening to podcasts, working out. I never worked out at all. Quit smoking cigarettes. Um, just really changed every aspect. Started eating healthy. Uh, got off of any type of medicine. And so, um, I think a big thing you started taking self criticism very strongly. And I, yeah, I started. I could, I, yeah, no, you're right. I did take self criticism hard at first. Me and Chris got into a lot of arguments and heated fights. I'll just be honest with you. And then, you know, Chris was right on a lot of things. And so, I, I had to come to, you know, it took me a while to get there. It wasn't just overnight, you know, because I I did at first think, oh, well, I, I recruited Chris, you know what I mean? And I kind of trained Chris, like, now he's my boss. And so it, it just was, like, kind of salty at first. Well, know? this is a meritocracy, man, and this is the thing that people don't understand. The community of men, we're Spartans, and it's the way in which you – Sell, build, and collect. You service your customer, deliver 100% satisfaction, can deliver a good profitable job, and then uh, sell and duplicate sales. Is in this industry sort of the contribution to the whole and to the mission that you are uh, ranked in this in this industry? And both of these guys, or all these guys, are doing their best to rise to the very top. Now, for me, I'm driven to be the undisputed best of all time, and I'm not there yet by any means, not even close, but I'm driven not just to compete with everyone inside of our organization because I'm not here to compete with us. I want to compete with everybody. <laughs> I want to be undisputed, just like line up 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 people in the roofing industry and for there to no, be hands down, no question. Now, been doing this for 15 years in this business, been a little while. Had some people in my family made 10 million a year in this in cash and last year we made a lot of money i'm proud to be part of my dad but i didn't make that much money so i'm still not even done as much as the most important people in my family have done so i can tell you this i can say you know um i do this for y'all i do this because y'all stories they drive me and uh whenever you have a team a wolf pack the wolf pack makes everyone stronger and it doesn't matter who's at the front of the wolf pack or at the back of the wolf pack or the middle of the wolf pack People that run without a wolf pack, they don't have that extra. And and you've had it your whole career. You've had it just about your whole life. I mean, sometimes you've gone off on your own. You've done your own things. It's been a little bit different. You hadn't had a lot of success there. But now you're, you know, what's wrong with the wolf pack? Sometimes, sometimes you, sometimes you, you fight with other wolves. Sometimes you get nicked up. Sometimes you don't like your position in the wolf pack. Sometimes if you don't like your position, then you fight for your position up. And in the end. We're all stronger. We all eat better. We all are able to feed our kids better. And uh, that means that the pack lives on. And so the definition of a great business and a legacy and my purpose in roofing, when I was there at my uncle's funeral, realizing how many people he helped, how many people that they've helped, when I'm thinking about your dad, how he helped me train roofs, how we collected video of him teaching other people how to train roofs. He's still teaching people how to train roofs on the internet, still has more YouTube views on his video organically than any Probably other video that we've sure. ever posted. But my point is, is like, you know, you, 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 with content that we're creating and and what we are doing in the roofing industry, we are building a Noah's Ark for anyone that wants to jump on board and not get beat by technology, not get beat by the lie that everyone's telling you that if you go to college, that you'll be okay, that if you find a good corporate company and get a salary in a 401k, that that's the answer. The answer is not that. Our founding forefathers were entrepreneurs, and if you want to have control of your own destiny, being a entrepreneur within a some an entrepreneur's big picture vision you know we want to be the multi-billion dollar roofing company that's the first publicly traded entity we're going to do it in a different way than anyone else has ever done before by educating our entire industry building a huge wolf pack a wolf pack that's not just our company but other companies so that we can all be stronger we can collaborate to dominate 
Chris's big job came as a result of a referral from within the Wolf Pack from Sky Diamonds, a roofer in my network. And, you know, in reality, guys, if you're watching this, what I want you to know is that um, this is what you do it for. The community that you build within your business, you do it for the community that you and make the impact outside your business. But these guys are my work family. This is my inner circle. And these guys are Spartans. They're able to sell, build, collect, train salespeople, go into an office, build a $10 million book of business, earn a million dollars in commissions in a year. Um, Anthony has, and Jared, these two guys are going to be, you know, last year they weren't managers growing in the company weren't even ideas managers about growing in the company now they're major mvp players that are going to help us get to 200 million in 2021 and so chris has been with the company and we've been waiting for him to step up we knew he had the talent to do it and sometimes you just have what what made you decide you are not going to be average anymore um honestly i don't remember an exact day but i know when jared stepped in and and Lee said, don't come back from Miami, that uh, I had to make figure something out. So um, we, we went on our way. And, and the biggest thing that I've always been grateful for Lee is uh, the path, the, the mission. Um, I've always kind of questioned it at first, but at the end of the day, um, headed out, truck loaded and boots, boots on the ground to make sure that, you know, I, I made what I had to do possible for the team. And um, at the end of the day, that's what it came down to. And, and that's where we are here. Anthony, so uh, what's your vision for your market? And what are your, ha what, my audience, if you're, if you're, if you're watching this and you're, you're a contractor, you're a roofer, you're in the winter time, it's cold where you're at. What do you have to say about, what do you have to say? Honestly, or the Orlando market is, is awesome. And it's going to be something that's always going to be around. It's it's a major hub. There's a lot of houses there. There's a lot of roofs there. And there's a lot of, like, damage that is there for people like us to go out and find and help these homeowners and, and make a name for us there. I mean, we're doing really good as far as moving forward with everything that we have a vision for in our company there at that office to make a change and make everybody – commit to the team and become a whole you know family there and push each and every different person is a different link that's making the other links move at the same time and it's just it's great i love the team there we're doing a great job and the the morale is just really turning around there and i really like it and i think they got a lot of momentum they're doing like 20 roofs a week right now over there, 20 Jake. roofs a week man and this office wasn't even off the ground seven months ago it was actually it was dead had quality control issues you came in there you turn it around yeah you got you d ate a lot of the frogs and laid on grenades as far as what we call handling problem customers and problem files and mm -hmm. you stay positive and now you're in growth mode and you know jared took you know the ego lumps on the chin and he made the million dollar uh, uh, impact on the company that he looked to make, which is really Jared cares about recognition. I just want you to know I recognize what you did, Jared. Um, but but this year, he's now got to build his own name in Tampa, and he's killing it. He's got a brand-new market with some great guys. There's a ton of uh, energy going there. And what what's going on in, in Tampa? Um. Tampa's actually a really good market. I mean, there's like four or five cities there, and a tornado came through there, and so did Irma hit it, and there's a lot of wind damage, and the roofs are way bigger than they are on the other coast. I mean, we got 50, 60 square roofs, so these guys are just out there. The ones that wanna, the ones that wanna win, and that's important to have only those guys in the office. If you got losers in the office, it affects other guys we had someone that's average so i had to eliminate all the average people that were infecting you know the david stevens the the trees stephen k wells the daniel ortiz shout um, out to Deshaun and joe they helped plant that office and get yeah, it shout out to Deshaun and joe you know they they are the top salesmen over there and they all bring all the new salesmen to their areas and so they're already got builds yeah, team players, and so they let them. That's that's a big thing too, letting them into their neighborhoods and being able to drop names when they're knocking doors first starting out in this business. Um, it gives them like some sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. And Chris is in Melbourne. It's one of our strongest offices. There's on the East Coast. We work all the way down to Jupiter, but it goes even all the way up to Daytona Beach. I mean, we have to touch Jacksonville when we need to every now and then. So. Yeah, until Dad Jacksonville touches you back. <laughs> um, OSHA is a bitch, guys. They, they'll find you eventually. They found us recently. But 
Um, anyways, Chris is hiring in Melbourne. If you're looking to find a good spot, these guys represent our middle Florida push, uh, Tampa, Melbourne, Orlando. And, dude, I could not do it without y'all. I just wanted to bring y'all on this uh, platform because, you know, uh, you are – the reflection of what we're doing. Our system is nothing if it's not working in the flesh. And the fact that you're able to go grow, build it, and look, he's been able to do 10 million. I expect the same out of you. We got to have more people. Same thing here. And, you know, I, I, tomorrow we're about to have Fight Club. Fight Club is going to be insane. Um, we are literally uh, going to be spending all day. Uh, starts with beach workouts, tug of war. We're going to be doing uh, a long run. We're going to be doing jujitsu, Muay Thai, and we're going to cap it off with boxing and mix in team building, leadership talk. We were completely exhausted like we ran a marathon. And everybody's going to face their fears. And it's going to be an epic, epic day of transformation. But I'm just, I wanted to get y'all on the podcast, get the story told. Get And, and we got to do this more often. We can do it through Zoom calls. You know, I want y'all to do it. You know, I want y'all to have your own. Uh, and one of the things that's going to be a change in 2021 is that I'm going to have a podcast for the company so that we do like, you know, for the company meeting at least once a, once a week that there's a 15 or 10 minute clip with me from message from here as opposed to, you know, where we can bring in different messages. You in each office. Yeah. There you go. I got to get that plane, dog. You know, tap that, tap that, tap All that. All we got to do is make so it So we're giving out 15 Rolexes uh, on Saturday and, uh, you know. I already gave out a couple too this year. And, and and that's about the culture. We we invest in the million dollar earners, and we invest in the people that live core values, and and we let people live uh, with timepieces that are gonna appreciate and value, and get a constant reminder of the First wolf one. pack. And see, the deal is, guys, you know, um, not everybody does that. Not everybody wants to reinvest into the culture, into the people. But the people are the best asset of our RCA. And you know, Chris has been with us for ten years. Um, Talk, talk about the improvement of the company before I did personal development, after the journey and the vision and how that all happened. Um, honestly, when I got into the company, we were going through a lot of development. Um, we had to get out a lot of rats. We had just rats running through our company rampant, and it was terrible. It, we, I mean, it was just to the point where deals were getting lost. I mean, we probably lost, what, like $50 million in deals in uh, South Dakota and Omaha together, mm -hmm. you know, just from rats, you know. So it was hard to try to understand leech. who who you are. Leech you, is you, not rats. Yeah. Yeah. Leech. You want, you want yeah. to get in the ring, Leech? Yeah. Le How about Leech Jr.? Yeah. Leech Jr. want to get in the ring? So it was hard to understand. Oh the hell, God, I, I'll take him. It was I'm hard to really... Honest. Yeah, was dead, dog. <laughs> Keep going. It was really hard to understand who your leader was and where your goals were going to be centered towards because we didn't really have the clear vision that we needed to have as a company with team, uh, you know, growth. And, and well, that year we had five offices and thirteen million in sales, and I made less money than I would have made if I'd have just sold a million bucks myself. Exactly. Yeah. The problem was we we couldn't keep no money. I mean, that was the issue, it was just bleeding out. And so until we got to Irma, until y'all got to Irma, that's what changed No, everything. Matthew, I think I started seeing most growth out of, like, when we left nah, Baltimore and Boston. it was completely different. Yeah, but completely Baltimore was different. the beginning of when I hired Grant Cardone, the idea of I was going to close him on a roof. That's what it was. Tell him about, we had a sales So call. what happened, where it actually started was in Pennsylvania. So I traveled... My first year, I started St. Louis, Omaha, South Dakota, went back to Texas for the winter, came up to um, Chicago, um, worked Chicago, and then went out to Pennsylvania. And this is into my second year. Lee finally decided that we need to have more structure in the company. And it was very, it was concerning to a lot of people because we didn't know how we were going to get Lee's vision. Was it going to be Lee's vision or was it going to be the company's vision? And it took a long time, in my opinion, for us to like really merge that. But at the same time, what we got was the training. He he diverted a lot of his energy into making sure that we were properly educated on how to handle people, uh, which is where Grant Cardone came into effect. And then two years into that, um, you know, trying to get the best deal with Grant Cardone that you can for the amount of sales guys that we got, he realized that we just needed to be a part of that platform. Not only that, it was a car sales platform. It wasn't for roofers. You couldn't go out and tell your sales, your roofing salesman to hard close someone. Yeah, at that time, no one had the interactive training. There yeah. was SVG did not have training. Nobody else had. I mean, Becca had yeah. a video deal, but there was no way to... 
train your people. And so since I saw Grant do it and duplicate it for the roofing business, that's what that's 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 me keep having to pay for coaching. Like that was costing me nine thousand a month. Mm -hmm. I had to start selling that shit so I, so I could pay the weed. Most man. of your guys I weren't mean, even doing it. Man. A lot of I the got guys, three courses for you. Huh? I got three three courses for you. And you had to yeah. pull teeth to get Yeah, and then also that year when I started selling myself, I was like pimping myself out. I remember and that too. Getting pulled in a hundred different directions and everybody I started promising calls as a rookie consultant and now I'm running a company and I got myself promised and spread thin and I lost money in roofing. I lost money. You ended up going to work with another company for a year the whole time. And it was just a bot and then I lost freaking up Donnie Black. Biggest thing five I, million dollars in business walked out of my office. Biggest thing I think you're stepping into I think you're stepping into some shoes. Are we gonna be able to continue this? Better hurry. I think you were stepping into some shoes that were needed to be filled and you just weren't quite ready to fill them. At the end of the day, when you started investing in yourself, you, you were able to grow to the point where you could fill those shoes. And, you know, that's honestly what brought me back into the vision because, you know, Boston, when I did go work for another company, I lost a lot of the vision. And mm -hmm. then, you know, when the got back to Florida, got back with the team, brought everything back together. So deal is, we're bumbling along here doing about 10 million in sales and I'm look thing about me is my dad's always had a big picture vision of um, having a software helping other roofers there's been a lot of expense and paying for growth and you know this this journey it looks like it's kind of like overnight blowing up but there's been a ton of cost and people don't realize that all this coaching and all this extra stuff this expensive stuff, sometimes you actually go into debt and lose money and it takes a little while to get your money back. So, you know, you saying that we needed more structure, what do you think is different now? Like how the company runs? Um, well, I think it, when I first got into the company, Lee was not only the owner, but also the manager. And um, I think the best thing about people when they get to a certain point of growth is they realize their strengths and their weaknesses. And to be honest, Lee's a great leader, but one of the worst managers I've ever dealt with um, in my entire life. I actually have a, um, a four worst page. Worst managers now. you've ever dealt with in your entire life? It's just... I got, like, I got management Bob's first leadership. Job, dog. It's That's just terrible. It, it's a great... He's a great person to work for, but it's extremely one-sided in the moment. At this, He'll come back to you, right? And you'll be able to merge later, but it, when he wants something and it's right his here. path, it's his mission. and And that's fine because what that's going to do is push you to the path where you need to be at the same time at the end of the day what i'm getting at is he brought people on to help manage where his weaknesses are and that's always the biggest thing is duplicating duplicating not only where you're strong but also where you're weak well a lot of people watch this and they don't realize that you, you don't have to be a great manager you don't have to be super organized you don't have to be a whiz accountant you don't have to be super like if you find a great team, it makes up for everything. Yeah, exactly. you, you instill the team. That's what changed, really, is you, you just keep pushing as a leader of the company. You just keep going bigger, 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 climbing up the ladder, next level, next level. But you got the team to to manage all the stuff you're creating. It's like a tree. As you're growing, your your roots are getting bigger and bigger. bigger. Your, tr your trunk is getting wider and wider, right? Like, even though your head's getting bigger. Yeah, it's time. getting bigger. Hey, look, you got in order to be great in business, you got to have big ego. I mean, you got to check your ego at the door a lot of times, but you got to be, you got to know, like Jared said, I'm a roof guy. I mean, I pat him on the back for saying that. And at the same time, I want to slap him because you got a lot to learn. But it's a double-edged sun. That's a dichotomy of leadership. And that's not just like a simple black and white line. He slapped me. I would be the Oh, but we got fight night, dog. You, you can get a chance to tap Dude, me out. I you can cage fight me. About, See, that's yeah, what we do at our RCA. We're Spartans, okay? We give away Rolexes, but you got to make it through the gauntlet first. The key that I'm noticing <laughs> is, you know, I've, I've recently, like, um, taken on – 
botany a little bit. I love growing like vegetables and stuff. Oh yeah, you go. What kind of vegetables you growing yeah, over there? Vegetables. Craig? I got rosemary, tomatoes. I got pineapples growing. I got all types of stuff. He does, basil. Got a lot of stuff. He ain't growing no herb though. I'm growing no. all the herbs, and so the <laughs> legally. And so the the thing is though, at the end of the day, you have to take care of your roots as much as you take care of your limbs because it. The wind's gonna blow no matter what. The roots aren't. People gonna, gonna come and go. You've seen a ton of people. You bet. There's a ton of part timers that come around here, man. Exactly. So if you don't take care of your 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 uh, your standing, your ground, what you what you what actually holds everything together, then everything's gonna fall apart. So that's that's the biggest thing. Hey guys, look. If you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe. Um, hey dude, excellent episode. We're gonna have to do this more often, guys. Um, if you want to connect with these guys uh, and you want to work in one of their offices, if you go to joinleehate.com, joinleehate.com, uh, you get leads, uh, coaching support. You also get these people mentoring you on how to be like Chris, a guy who earned a million dollars in commissions in 2020. Hats off to you, brother. And I uh, really appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for doing this. And uh, like I said, subscribe and watch this next episode where we get into the boss talk. Here we go.